there is no one way, unfortunately, to identify uh, images or documents or other kinds of files that need that second look, need that examination that Katie's talking about. So you've got to look at quite a few different things. So one thing you can look at to try to find um, these kinds of files is the reuse of files across multiple claims. We call that duplication detection. So you would expect that images that come in as part of a claim file that are, say, photos of a damaged vehicle or structure, et cetera, would be unique to that particular loss. Uh, in fact, we've done a few studies and we've found that there are quite a good number of these kinds of files that get reused across many different types of insurance claims. So one approach to finding these not, not so trustworthy digital files is to look for duplicates. Um, another is to deeply analyze the metadata or the structure of images and documents. So you may not realize that a PDF file, to take that as an example, is actually made up of a bunch of code, a bunch of markup, a language behind the scenes. And that, that language describes how to lay out that information visually on a page. And that structure can tell you a lot about the software that created it, as different softwares make different decisions, uh, and about changes that might have been made after the original file was created. So you can deeply analyze that structure, but it takes a lot of know-how to know what to look for within that code. Uh, so that's one thing you can look at. Um, further, you can look at metadata. So both images and documents have information such as uh, when and where that file was created, um, what software uh, last touched it, et cetera. So there can be a lot of breadcrumbs that are left behind or a lot of things that might cause you to want to be alerted to um, something potentially wrong with that file. Uh, further, very similar to the, the reuse of photos across multiple claims, um, we can find the use of photos from the internet within a claim. So it's important to include uh, systematic internet searches. This again is something that's quite difficult to do manually, right? If you're, you're very, bu very busy claims adjuster, has got five or six or more claims to get to today. It's very difficult to go out online and try to find out if this photo was taken from the internet. Uh, so it's important to have systematic capabilities built in to do that. Uh, and then the most advanced methods uh, of detection rely on, uh, upon machine learning. So these are algorithms that are not trained um, you know, based on a human being writing a bunch of if-then statements, but rather trained on a whole bunch of data. So at Verus, for example, we've, we've collected probably the world's largest set of PDF documents that we know have been manipulated, and we know just how, because we took a bunch of documents that we ourselves created, and we sent them off to hundreds or probably thousands, over a thousand different workers around the world, and paid them to modify those and send them back to us. Um, that enables us to apply machine learning methods and to be able to identify whether these algorithms are performing as they as we would expect them to perform. Uh, these machine learning methods are important because they can find a very wide variety of different ways in which files are modified. Uh, so if you look at that image on the bottom right, we'll show you this in a demo a little bit later on, um, you can look even at information that the human eye is just not capable of seeing. So when a human looks at that photo, you see that there's a, an image with some plumbing and that there's some water spraying out of a pipe, um, but a, a, an algorithm can look at that and, and see a lot more can understand um, differences in the way that different cameras focus light or capture a particular real world color. And we can analyze that information in a machine learning algorithm and flag an image as being uh, non-authentic. And then finally, there's a whole different class of approaches that we call provenance. So all of the above, from duplication to detection to machine learning, these are all detection-based based methods. So you, you can imagine that you, you're sitting at a desk and someone sends you a file and says, hey, tell me if this is authentic. All you know is that you've got a file on your desk and you can use a bunch of tools to try to gauge the authenticity of that file. That's always going to be difficult, even if you have great tools. Um, provenance takes a different approach, and I think this is something that the industry is likely to want to adopt in the future. But the idea here is that we want to know stuff about that file. We want to know who created it, where, using what software. That we want to have mechanisms in place to track any changes made to that file so that we know that those changes are not nefarious. They're not likely to be associated with fraud. Uh, so there are open standards, open technical standards that are being developed right now at organizations like C2PA, which is the Coalition for Content Providence and Authenticity, that are going to allow um, device makers even. So it might be um, tools that create or generate PDFs or that capture um, images on a smartphone or a digital camera that allow the embedding of the, this kind of information in the file and use encryption in a way that prevents it being stripped off or removed so that we can actually certify that that is an authentic document. So as you're looking to adopt a forensics approach, you want to be able to look at a number of these different uh, ways to, to gauge the authenticity of the document.